Hello and welcome back to section 2 of chapter 1 in pre-calc. Today we're going to look at graphs of equations. Now if you think back to Algebra 1 and Algebra 2, we talked about how an ordered pair would be a solution of an equation in x and y if that equation is true, if you can plug in the ordered pair AB for x and y. I also just wanted to remind you that when you see that phrase, an equation in two variables, that this really is talking about the relationship between quantities expressed as an equation. So let's go ahead and look at example one. Example one says to determine whether the ordered pair negative 2, 4 is a solution of the equation y equals 8x minus 5. So to determine whether or not it's a solution, we're going to take this ordered pair, and if you remember, these are our x values, the 4 is the y value, and we're just going to plug those into our equation. So we end up with 4 is equal to 8 times a negative 2 minus 5. So if we simplify this, we have 4 equals 8 times a negative 2 is a negative 16 minus 5. And a negative 16 minus 5 is equal to a negative 21. Now in this case, 4 does not equal a negative 21. So we would then say that this is not a solution. When we start talking about sketching or graphing an equation, the most basic technique that we have is called the point plotting method. Um, and the point plotting method just says that if it's possible, you want to rewrite your equation so that one variable is isolated. And typically we do that. We'll set it as a y equals equation. Um, but essentially you want to isolate a variable on one side and put everything else on the other. Then you're going to make a table of the values, typically your x and y values. You're going to plot these points. And then the last thing you want to do is you want to connect the points with some type of a smooth curve or line. Now in example two, we're going to sketch the graph of y equals a negative 3x plus 2. And if you notice right here, um, I did create a table. Our equation has already isolated the variable y for us, so we don't have to do any further modifications with that. And I just created a column for x's. We're going to take those x values, plug it into this equation to solve for our y values, and then that's going to give us our coordinate point. These coordinate points that we'll put in here are then going to be plotted on our graph. Now the one thing I want to make sure that you guys do is in your homework, I have several different types of graph paper. Please use graph paper when you're plotting these in your homework. Now, to get back to the example, I'm just going to pick a couple arbitrary points. And in this case, I'm going to pick values of negative 1 for x, 0, 1, and 2. And if I go in and I plug a negative 1 in to this equation here, I end up with 5. If I plug a 0 in, I end up with 2. If we plug the positive 1 in, we get a negative 1. And if you plug this positive 2 in, you get a negative 4. So what this has done is we have now created coordinate points, or an ordered pair, of negative 1, 5, 0, 2, 1, negative 1, and 2, negative 4. And it's these ordered pairs here that I'm going to plot. So when I do that, I'm going to come over to my graph and I have negative 1, 5, which will be right here. 0, 2 will be right here. 1, negative 1 is going to fall here. And 2, negative 4 will fall right here. And if you remember, the most important thing that you still have to do yet is to connect all of these points. So if I go ahead and connect these points, I'm going to get a line that looks something like this. And just as a confirmation, when I look at my basic equation, 
Uh, I have a first degree polynomial, which means it should be a linear line, which is what I ended up with. So it's kind of a good second get or second check. Now example three is very similar. It says to sketch the graph of y equals one minus x squared. And again, I'm just gonna pick some arbitrary points. So this time I think I will do negative one zero, one, and two for my x values. If I plug a negative one into this equation over here, I have one minus a negative one squared, which is going to give me zero. Then I'm going to have one minus one, or zero squared, which will give me one. And when I plug a one in, I'm gonna end up with a zero. And when I plug 2 in, I'm going to end up with a negative 3. So the ordered pairs that I just generated are 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 2, negative 3. I'm going to predict before I actually graph. When I look at this function right here, I see I have a negative x squared or a negative second degree polynomial. A second degree polynomial tells me I'm gonna have a parabola and because it's negative, it should be downward facing. So now when I go and plot my points, I have negative one, zero, zero, one, one, zero, and two, negative three. When I go ahead and connect my points, I see that I still have my downward facing parabola, so I am good to go. Again, it's very important that you learn to predict the basic shapes of um, our functions. Now, even though point plotting is relatively easy to use, it does have its limitations. Um, the biggest thing is if you do not pick enough points, or you pick points that are kind of spread out, you may misinterpret or not grasp the true shape of the graph. So sometimes it's actually better to use other methods. Now, another method that we could use would be to find the zeros or the solutions of a function because the solutions or zeros occur at our intercepts. And when we try to calculate intercepts, we can actually have graphs that either have no intercepts, one intercept, or several intercepts. And these are just a few examples. If we have a graph that has no x-intercept but one y, we're going to get something like this. We have the y-intercept but nothing touching the x-axis. This graph here has three x-intercepts and one y-intercept. This one here has two y-intercepts with only one x and the circle graph has no x and no y-intercepts. And again, back in Algebra 1 and Algebra 2, you did learn how to calculate your intercepts. If we want to find our x-intercept, we're going to set y equal to 0 and solve for x, and you'll get some coordinate point that looks like x, 0. If you want to solve for your y-intercept, you're going to set x equal to 0 and solve for y, or you'll get a coordinate point that has zero y. So that takes us to example four that says find the x and the y intercepts of the function y equals negative x squared minus five x. So let's start out by looking at our x intercepts first. As we mentioned earlier, to find your x intercept, we're going to go and set y equal to zero. So that means I'm going to go 0 is equal to a negative x squared minus 5x. I see that I have an x in both terms. I actually have a negative x within both terms. So I can factor the negative x out. And that's going to give me a positive x plus 5, which then gives me two factors. I have this factor and this factor. So my solutions then would become x equals 0 
or x equals a negative 5. So that tells me then that my intercepts are at the coordinate point 0, 0, because remember our y values will always be 0, or I have negative 5, 0 as my other intercept. We're going to go through the same process for the y-intercept. The only difference with the y-intercept is that we're actually going to set x equal to 0. So in this case, I have y equals a negative 0 squared minus 5 times 0, or in this case, y equals 0. So then my coordinate point is actually we already said x was 0, and I just calculated y to also be 0, so our y-intercept also occurs at the point 0, 0. So my final answers are going to be 2x-intercepts and 1y-intercept. Another little trick that we can use when graphing equations is to know our symmetry. We have three different types of symmetry and those three are going to be with respect to the x-axis, the y-axis, and the origin. Now just some quick sketches. If we're looking at symmetry with respect to the x-axis, that's going to be something that looks like this. Okay, and you're going to be given a point here that would fall at x, y, and the corresponding point would be x negative y. If we have respect with or symmetry with respect to the y-axis, that's your standard parabola. Okay, and you're going to be given a point here that would be a negative x y and a corresponding point over here that would be the positive x positive y. And if you have symmetry with respect to the origin, you're going to end up with something like this. And here you would have the point negative x, negative y, and the corresponding point then would be a positive x, positive y. So these are just some rough ideas of what the different types of symmetry look like. Now a way to test that your graph does have symmetry with respect to a particular axis or the origin and you can refer back to those drawings that we just did um, but if you have a point xy on the graph and a corresponding point that has the same x value but the opposite sign on the y value that tells us it's symmetrical with respect to the x-axis if you have a coordinate point xy and it has the same x value with a different sign and the same y value that tells you it's symmetrical with respect to the y-axis. Or the third case would be if you have a point xy and you have a corresponding point that has the same number, just a different sign on x, and likewise the same thing with y, that tells you it's symmetrical with respect to the origin. Now, if none of these apply, some of our graphs have no symmetry whatsoever, so that's okay too. Now this here is just another example. If you look at this graph here, I see that if I pick the point x, y, or in this case it's 3, 7, I have a corresponding point over here that has, it's a 3, but in this case it's a negative 3 and a positive 7. So if I go back and look at the table on the previous slide, I see that if I have the opposite x value and the same y value, I have symmetry then with respect to the y axis. And if you see, this half here can actually be reflected over the y axis and give you this half. So that concludes that you have symmetry with respect to the y axis as well. Now in example 5, we want to determine the symmetry of the graph. So without graphing it, we want to tell if it has symmetry with respect to the x, the y-axis, or the origin. Now to do that, we're going to have to do a little bit of math. And let's just start out with the y-axis. Now with my y-axis symmetry, I know that my 
y value stays the same, so I'm going to go y squared equals 6 minus, now the sign is going to change on my x value, so this is going to become a negative x. If I have respect to symmetry with respect to the y-axis, then when I simplify this equation, I should get my original equation back. So in this case, I have y squared equals 6. Now I have minus and negative, so these are really going to be changed to a plus sign, which is going to make this 6 plus x. And because this equation here is not the same as my original equation, I'm going to say that this is not symmetrical or not the same. So that tells me then that I have to look at something different. I'm going to look at the origin. Now for the origin, we know that the sign of that both the x and the y have to change. So in this case, I have a negative y, and I'm going to square that, is equal to 6 minus a negative x. And if you notice, I'm just changing the sign of my y and the sign of the x. And if I get the same equation when I simplify it as I did when I started, then I know I have symmetry with respect to the origin. So let's go ahead and simplify. A negative y raised to the second power is going to give me a positive y. Then I have 6 minus a negative is going to give me plus. So now I have y equals 6 plus x. Okay, again, this here is not the same as my original. So I'm going to say not the same. So that tells me that I'm going to have to try the x-axis. So if we go to the x-axis, the difference on the x-axis is that our y value changed signs, but our x stayed the same. So in this case, I have a negative y squared is equal to 6 minus x. So a negative y squared is going to give me a positive y squared. And that's going to equal 6 minus x. Now, this equation here is the same as this equation. So now I can say that this here has symmetry with respect to the x-axis. If you have questions on this, please, please, please let me know in class. Okay, at this point you can put your video on pause, read through the algebraic test. We pretty much did the algebraic test in the last example, um, but if you, in a nutshell, like it says, if you have symmetry with respect to the x-axis, you should be able to replace your y value with a negative y and give you an equivalent equi an equation which means that it should be the same thing as your original equation. Likewise, if you have symmetry with respect to that y-axis, you're going to replace your x with a negative x and get that equivalent equation. Or if you're symmetrical with respect to the origin, you should be able to replace both x and y with the negative x and negative y and give you an equivalent equation. Okay, so example 6 says, use the algebraic tests for symmetry to determine the symmetry of y equals the absolute value of x minus 1. So I'm just going to start out with the x axis symmetry. Okay, and remember if you're replacing uh, or if you're doing symmetry with respect to the x axis, you're going to replace your y value with a negative y. So in this case, I'd have a negative y is equal to the absolute value of x minus 1. Okay, and looking from here to here, I'm going to say that these are not equal. Okay, therefore the symmetry is not with respect to the x-axis. 
So that's going to tell me that I have to go to the y-axis symmetry. And for the y-axis symmetry, we're going to change the sign of the x value. So I have y equals the absolute value of a negative x minus 1. Well, when I look at this equation here and this equation here, they're still not the same because of this negative x value. So therefore, I can conclude that these are not equal and there is no symmetry with respect to the y-axis. So now I'm going to go and check the origin. And symmetry with respect to the origin means that I change the sign of the y value and the sign of the x value. So I end up with a negative y equals the absolute value of a negative x minus 1. And by doing this, I should see that this equation is not the same as my original, so these are not equal. Now because I got three different tests, all of which told me that they were not equal, that tells me that I have no symmetry with respect to the x-axis, the y-axis, or the origin. So you can go ahead and list that out and say that there is no symmetry. Okay, and if you sketch this graph on your calculator, you will see that you actually get a graph that looks something like this, where the vertex of that absolute value function is actually shifted over. Okay, and the last thing we're going to talk about in this section is I want you guys to be able to recognize standard equations for graphs. Um, something like y equals mx plus b you should know is going to be a straight line. Something in the form y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. You should know that this graph here is going to produce a parabola. This equation here, the quantity of x minus h squared plus the quantity of y minus k squared equals r squared, I hope by now you know will generate a circle. Okay, these are some of the basic functions that you need to start being able to recognize. So our last example says the point 1, negative 2 lies on a circle whose center is at negative 3, negative 5. What we need to do is to write the standard form of the equation of a circle. Well, if you recall, the equation of the circle was the quantity of x minus h squared plus the quantity of y minus k squared is equal to r squared. Now we are also given another key piece and that key piece was to, uh, the fact that we have a center is at negative 3, negative 5 and if you recall our coordinates of our center point are actually this h and k. So I can rewrite the standard form of my equation as x minus a negative 3 squared plus y minus a negative 5 squared is equal to r squared. So if I simplify that, I have the quantity of x plus 3 squared plus y plus 5 squared equals r squared. So we are almost in our standard form. The only thing we're missing now is our r value. And if you recall, r is your radius. And if you want to find the radius, you're really looking for the distance between your center here and the point that lies on your line. So we are going to have to use the distance formula. So that r value is really equal to your distance formula. And if you recall, the distance formula is really the square root of x2 minus x1 
squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. So if we go ahead and plug in what we know, we know that our x2 value is going to be 1 minus a negative 3 becomes 1 plus 3, the quantity squared, plus a negative 2 minus a negative 5 becomes negative 2 plus 5, that quantity squared. So this is going to give us the square root. 1 plus 3 is 4. 4 squared is 16 plus negative 2 plus 5 is 3, and 3 squared is 9. So the square root of 16 plus 9 gives us the square root of 25, or we have a radius of 5. So your final answer of that circle should be the quantity of x plus 3 squared plus the quantity of y plus 5 squared is equal to our r squared value, which is really 25. And that completes our last example. Now our fun fact for today is really more like a fun cartoon. Um, if you have any questions or you need me to explain this, let me know in class. I hope you guys have a good night, and I will see you tomorrow.